friends. Welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and today I thought it would be fun for you to kind of follow me along as I tackle the hot mess that is behind me. If you are familiar with Gardening with Creekside, if you've been following us for some time now, you will probably, maybe, recognize this space behind me. It is our garden boxes and then kind of my cottage garden right here. And this is the area that I see as soon as I look out my kitchen window that's right above my sink. So you mamas know that I spend a lot of time there washing dishes. This place has driven me absolutely crazy because clearly, you know, we've had lots of good freezes and these guys are toasty. I still have old annuals in here. I have perennials that need to be trimming back. Jerry is still at work. He'll be coming home in a little bit and then we're gonna be going up there um, to the production greenhouse and doing a couple of things up there that we'll take you along with that little tour of that. The kids are at my mama's playing with my sister's kids. They're here visiting for the day. So it's always fun when the cousins come to town. So I actually have some peace and quiet here at the house by myself. So I wanna go ahead and tackle this because this mess behind me makes my brain hurt and I like clean and order and this is not clean and order. So I'm just gonna spend some time, some quiet time alone um, cleaning this up and I thought you might wanna come along with a ride with me. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and kind of walk you through all the mess that is here and just kind of give you an overview of what I'm gonna do before I actually get started. Main area that I'm gonna focus on today, depending on how much time I have, is first gonna be the cottage garden down here. You can see that my Amsonia is zapped. The, um, there's salvia that has been, I mean, everything's been zapped. There's nothing in here that has not been touched by the cold weather because we've had 20 degree nights already. But I mean, that right there, that's coleus. I mean, what in the world? Why is it still there? It's just a hot mess. Hot Mess Express, Jenny is on board. Right here in front of me, however, this lovely brown going on, that is my Miss Huff Lantana. Miss Huff is, for us, the only perennial lantana that will survive our winters, hence it is a perennial. Now, in order for it to stay a perennial, I cannot touch this until next spring. So those of you that have Miss Huff or you have perennial lantanas, you do not trim them until the late spring when you see green growth on them. If you were to trim them now, most likely they will not survive the winter because they have hollow stems and all the water will get down in there and they will rot. So Miss Huff is going to stay but like this is my vermilionaire, all those little wispies with the coleus behind it. That's got to go. I mean, look at that up there, y'all. Blessed. I still have tomato cages on tomatoes and peppers. Whoo, sad. Um, and then this is all going to get cleaned up. This was, again, this was another vermilionaire. That's that light brown. Behind the vermilionaire was an annual lantana it will go ahead and get yanked out because like I said, it is an annual, so it's gonna get gone. Some of my perennials though are semi-evergreens like the dianthus, paint the town dianthus. Obviously it's gonna stay behind the rock. If you can see, that is the Proven Winners Guara, so it will stay. And then my baptiza, the lemon meringue baptiza, it just gets cut to the ground. So I'm just gonna kind of set the camera up and let y'all watch me work.
I've got the beds at least cleaned up where the annuals have been pulled out and the perennials that I need to have cut back are already cut back. I told you that I would work on this area until Jerry got home. Well, he is home and videoing me right now. So we're gonna go ahead and move on back up to the production greenhouse because we need to put on the back door. So the back door of the greenhouse that rolls up and down, we never got that put on last year. So we need to do that now because I want that greenhouse 100% completely done before we start on the other one. That's where we're gonna go and we will see where the day takes us from there. As far as this area, I need to come back um, I may mulch it now or I may wait in the spring. I really don't know. But as far as the tidying up goes, it is done. The next thing that's gonna be on my list to do, which is driving me crazy, of course, are the garden boxes. Three of the five garden boxes are complete and tidy and look good. And then there are two that obviously the ones with the tomatoes and the peppers, they, that needs to be cleaned up. And then the middle one with the herbs, some of that needs just a little bit of tidying up there. And then on the bank where the little limes and the fire lights are, I do wanna go ahead and trim those back because you can either trim them back now or you can do them in the late, late winter, early spring. Normally that is when I do it, but right now, honestly, it's just driving me crazy seeing all those little old heads so I want to trim those back and then that bank definitely needs some more mulch because we can see red dirt coming up through that so we will do that when will that happen well time will tell and we will see when that actually happens but that is the plan for this place over here so just know that it's never too late it's never you know to be cleaning up we just you know life happens right we are, we're working we're most of us are homeschooling if we have kiddos at the house there's just a lot of things going on but there is grace in gardening so you get it done when you can get it done and right now we have time to go work on the new greenhouse so that's what we're going to go do We are missing the door to the back of the greenhouse. That is project number one. Well, priority number one, I should say, not project number one, priority number one for this afternoon. There's always so many projects going on. We're getting set up. Um, it will be a rolling door on the front, on the back, just like we have on the front. Um, what we did last year when we were growing, when we were growing, I can't even think y'all, my kids are over here playing with their cousins and they're screaming and it's distracting, so I do apologize. But last year when we put the greenhouse together, obviously we went ahead and got the front door semi put together, but we were so late getting this greenhouse up. I mean, it was February before we really got it up and running and we had plants that had to go in it like ASAP. So we got it covered and then with the plastic, when you do a greenhouse, all the sheets come in one complete sheet. So on this whole back of the greenhouse, that was one continuous piece of plastic. So we framed out the door and then the plastic was still on there. So we just left the plastic on there um, and just cinched it down at the bottom so it had the same kind of the effect of being a door. Obviously we just couldn't open and close it, which was fine. And then this summer when it was hot and we needed to drive through it, we just got a razor blade and cut it out because it was already framed. Now that it's getting winter, we need to seal it back up. So we're gonna put the door on only a year late, it's fine. So that's what we're gonna do now, and it definitely is a two-person job. So we're gonna get started on that. Okay, friends, it is a couple of days later and we are inside the greenhouse. You can see behind me that the door is up and it is ready to go. 
it is quite a job to put these doors on because like i mentioned before all of these pieces of whether they're the fabric the fabric of the doors or the plastic on the greenhouses they're all one piece obviously to keep it well insulated and so that you don't have any holes or areas for wind to come in so when you're you know roughing it and having to wrestle a piece of fabric the size of that door it can be quite interesting sometimes you will notice that once we got the fabric kind of in place jerry was up there on the ladder using what we call wiggle wire to cinch in the fabric to the greenhouse all of the plastic and the fabric for the greenhouse is cinched in using that wiggle wire it is a fantastic creation invention where it's literally just a piece of wire that has wiggles and we just slide it into what's well, not slide you weave it into the track and it's a really tight secure way um, to hold the whole greenhouse fabrics and plastics together somebody had asked earlier about you know do we ever worry about or have issues with high winds with our greenhouses we really don't um, because one of those things is is that wiggle wire when we first started doing greenhouses our very first one we would we didn't have wiggle wire we just used like a board on top of a board and sandwiched the plastic between it and nailed it in or screwed it in that way then we had some issues but with this wiggle wire it is so tight and secure this fabric and plastic is not going to go anywhere you will see in here we had talked before about you know we had fabric were we going to do fabric again were we going to just leave it as gravel we did pull up the, the landscape fabric because again when we were putting this greenhouse together it was probably january february really wet it was really hard to get our red clay nice and flat and level so we did have some dips and some areas that held water of course that drove jerry crazy so we pulled it out and then brought in this nice gravel to really fill in any holes we have decided and the kids agreed because we asked them their thoughts that we are going to leave it as gravel and not put landscape fabric down in here because this greenhouse we're going to have a lot of going in and out with the Kubota and the tractor and the um, trailer and then of course the bobcat with the forks and all this stuff so there's going to be a lot of equipment in here moving obviously the gravel will handle that a whole lot better than landscape fabric so we are going to leave it as gravel and as you can see it is already the dark spots over here is where we had some rain and the sides were up so that's why i know that somebody's going to ask well why is it wet on the sides we had a lot of rain coming in the other day and the sides were up therefore the water blew in the gravel is darker Anyway, as always, we will keep you updated and posted on all the shenanigans that go on here at Creekside Nursery. Y'all have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.